In this lesson we're going to look at a particular application of differentiation which is to help us compare graphs of functions with the graphs of the derivatives of those functions. Now what that means is we're going to look at a function, consider the gradient of that function at various points throughout and draw a graph of the derivative of the function which really means plotting a graph that shows the gradient of the function. So if you have a look at this function here which we've called f of x, look at the gradient throughout the function. In the first section the gradient is negative and there's a horizontal point of inflection. At this point the gradient is zero. But after that the gradient continues to be negative until we reach this minimum turning point where the gradient is also zero and from then on the gradient becomes positive. So we've got negative gradient, zero, negative gradient again, zero and positive gradient. Although this is a negative gradient, the gradient changes throughout this section. It's particularly noticeable as we approach the zero. It's still negative but the gradient increases then after the horizontal point of inflection, the gradient is still negative, but we can see it's becoming steeper during the first section here. Now what that means is it's becoming more negative. In other words, it is decreasing. Now somewhere in between the two zeros, the gradient starts to increase again. So it's becoming less steep. And then it continues to increase. So the gradient is negative, reaches the minimum turning point, then the gradient is positive. But throughout this section of the curve, the gradient is increasing. And throughout this section of the curve, the gradient is decreasing. Now when we're talking about the gradient increasing and decreasing, we're talking about the concavity of the curve. So where the gradient is increasing, this is called concave up. Some people find it helpful to think of this as being bowl shape. It curves upwards. There's a small section between the points of inflection where the gradient is decreasing and then the gradient starts to increase again. It's negative, zero, positive, but it's increasing throughout this section. Now I mentioned points of inflection there. They are significant because points of inflection are where the concavity changes. So a point of inflection is where concave up meets concave down. So in this function we've got concave up while the gradient is increasing. Then we've got concave down where the shape is more like part of a hill. And then we've got concave up while the gradient is increasing. Now we're going to use this information to plot a graph of the gradient. So the significant points on my function, I've got a horizontal inflection point, I've got an inflection point, and I've got a minimum turning point. Now at the horizontal inflection point and the turning point, the gradient is zero. So when I plot the graph of the gradient of this function, at these two x values, the value of the gradient is zero. So I'm going to plot those as zeros on my new graph. Now up until that first horizontal inflection point, remember the gradient is negative but increasing. So drawing the gradient, it's going to be negative but increasing up to that x value. Now on the right hand side of the graph I've got this section which is gradient positive but increasing. So from that zero we're positive but increasing. So that my gradient will be positive and increasing. Now let's think about what happens in between. We've got this section between the horizontal inflection point and the other inflection point and what have we got? We've got a negative gradient but it's a decreasing 
negative gradient. So we stay negative and we're decreasing. But when we get to the inflection point, the gradient is still negative, but it starts to increase up to that zero. So it's going to look something like this. My original function is f of x. My derivative, which remember is a graph of the gradient of the original function, f dash of x. Now let's see if we can sketch the second derivative. So looking at the first derivative, the gradient at the beginning is positive, reaches a turning point, at which point the gradient is zero, goes down, so negative gradient, zero, and then positive gradient. So when I'm plotting the values, my gradient is going to be positive, reach a value of zero, then negative, but it decreases and then starts to increase again. So decreases, then starts to increase again. And then from then on, the gradient is positive and increasing. So look at the key points of the first derivative. We've got two turning points when the gradient is zero. And we have a point of inflection in between the two turning points. Here's the graph of my second derivative. So remember, I'm looking at the graph of the first derivative and I'm plotting the gradient. It's positive but decreasing, then it's negative, then it's negative but decreasing, switches to negative but increasing, reaches zero, and from then on it's positive but increasing. Here's another function, g of x this time. And I'd like you to pause the video, consider the gradient throughout this function, whether it's positive or negative, increasing or decreasing, and see if you can plot the graph of the first and second derivatives of this function. So firstly, the gradient is positive, reaches a maximum turning point where the gradient is zero, then the gradient is negative, reaches a horizontal point of inflection where the gradient is zero, and then the gradient is negative. During the first section, the gradient is positive, but it's decreasing. It's becoming less steep. So in this section, we are concave down. The gradient continues to decrease so it's positive, zero, negative, it's still decreasing until about here. So it looks like we've got a point of inflection here. So the gradient between the two zeros, it's negative, but it starts off decreasing and then it starts to increase again back to that zero and then it's decreasing. So between the two inflection points, we're concave up and then past that second inflection point we're concave down again. So I'm going to use these features to plot the graph of the first derivative. Remember my turning point has a gradient of zero, so this will have a value of zero in my first derivative. There's a horizontal inflection point also with a gradient of zero, and so we need to make this a zero on the graph of our first derivative. Now my point of inflection where concave down meets concave up, that means my gradient is going to change from decreasing to increasing. And the gradient is negative throughout this section, so we're going to be below the x-axis. And in fact, the gradient is negative all the way from this maximum turning point onwards. So the graph of the first derivative will not go above the x-axis throughout the whole of this last section. So we're going to be going decreasing, increasing, and decreasing again. And at the beginning, the gradient is positive, but decreasing. So here's the graph of the first derivative, g dash of x. Now let's have a think about the second derivative. Remember, this is like the plotting the gradient 
of the gradient function. So looking at the red graph now, the gradient is negative. It reaches a zero. Then it's positive, reaches another zero. And then it's negative again. So in terms of values, my zero gradient for my second derivative is now a zero value. And over here, I've got another zero gradient, which becomes a zero value. And my gradient is negative, zero, positive, zero, negative. So the second derivative, negative, zero, positive, zero, negative. And notice in between these two zeros, the concavity changes. Concave up, the gradient is increasing, then it starts to decrease again. So there's a point of inflection here which equates to a turning point on the second derivative. What I'd like you to do now is consider the relationship between the original function, which is in blue here, g of x, and the graph of the second derivative of the function, g double dash of x, the purple graph here. Now if you look at g double dash of x, the second derivative graph, you can see that it's negative for the first section, then it's positive, and then it's negative again. So we've got this part of the graph where g double dash less than zero, then we've got this part of the graph where g double dash of x is greater than zero, and then it goes back to being less than zero. And there are a couple of points where the value of the second derivative is equal to zero. Now let's compare those with the original function. So where we've got the second derivative of x less than zero, the original function, that's this part of the function, is concave down. And the same over on the right, we've got g double dash of x less than zero, also equates to a portion where the original graph is concave down. So in other words, whenever the second derivative is less than zero, the original function is concave down. Now if we have a look at where the second derivative is positive, and that's when the original function is concave up. Or in other words, the gradient is increasing. So when the second derivative, the function, is greater than zero, the original function is concave up. And then we've got those two places where the second derivative is equal to zero, and they equate to points of inflection on the original function, where concave down meets concave up, or where concave up meets concave down. So whenever the second derivative of a function is equal to zero, then the function is a point of inflection. Let's go back to the first example as well and just check that this relationship holds. So again, comparing the second derivative function with the original function. So I'm going to remove the first derivative, make it easier to compare them. So looking at the second derivative, wherever the second derivative is positive, so that's this section and this section, where we've got f double dash of x positive. On the original function, we've got concave up, and this bit also concave up. We've got two zeros on the second derivative function, so f double dash of x equals zero. And you can see on the blue function that these are indeed points of inflection. And then in between those two zeros where the second derivative is negative, that equates to concave down on the original function.